so hey guys welcome to this video and i'm gonna be talking about cryptocurrency and its uses and how it can actually be useful in the real world how it can actually fix the governments how it can actually fix the money system and also the corruption and the usage of money where the money is going how the government is using it how the banks are using money so right now you don't have any info on how banks use your money as capital when you invest it or when you give it to the banks for some empty purpose or basically you don't have details on an online decentralized platform. It's only the bank who knows where your money is and where everything is stored, what your data is. If the bank manipulates your data, then what will you be able to do if your data is not updated? Suppose I have 1 lakh rupees in my bank right now and if the bank manipulates it to I don't have any balance, I don't have any account so I cannot really do anything. Like status and details aren't updated. I cannot really do anything. Banks really don't do this but what usually banks do is they're not decentralized. They, they want to keep track of your money. So basically when you withdraw big amounts or when you need some big transactions, banks are always like, so what do you need it for? And they always kind of question you. They always kind of ask you to bring your PAN card, Aadhaar card, or basically have a transaction issue. They're not very chill. Like you cannot straight up draw $10,000 from a bank straight up. That is a very big concern of privacy because if that is my money, I want it to use however I want it to. I wanted to use whatever way I want my money to be. If I want to spend like all $10,000, I will do it. If now coming over to the second use of cryptocurrency, how it can actually help the real world. It can help the governments and their spendings and decrease in corruption. So basically how cryptocurrency is gonna help the normal public whether the government is right or not, whether they're spending their budgets and how they're functioning is everything will be on a blockchain. Everything will be encrypted and everything will be on a public platform where you can know where the funds are going. So suppose if $1 million government has planned for some donations or some project, you can track it where each and every penny is going. If people can actually track it. So there will be no corruptions and hence that is the main reason why governments are afraid of crypto that that basically banks and governments are and private companies too some private companies too they are banks are private banks are mostly private so they are afraid of cryptocurrency and blockchain concept because if everything will be public then you know you cannot really start corruption and you cannot really earn how much you are making now and there is definitely corruption in most countries. In India, it's very prevalent. And I'm moving on to more uses of cryptocurrency. For me, like blockchain concept and technology Web 3.0, I know Web 3.0 isn't the best concept around because it uses like it. It makes you stay in the virtual world more. And people say that you do not use like real world resources and you're not Basically, we are saving on the planet. It consumes less overall power. Even if you're staying in the internet world, in the VR world, you're still using electricity. And that electricity is coming from somewhere. So basically, that electricity is coming from coal right now, mostly. And some of that is so solar power. Some of that is wind energy. But mostly, it's from coal, which causes a lot of pollution for now. And to be honest, banks too use a lot of energy. Banks are really inefficient. They have been getting efficient recently, but banks are still inefficient as compared to cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. So as compared to banks, crypto is really efficient. It can handle a lot of people, a lot of transactions, which makes crypto, you know, inevitable. So in the history, there were gold, silver, copper, and basically precious metals used but nobody could stop the coin and notes from coming in. So that was inevitable because we cannot, there is not an unlimited supply of gold, silver, which is found on the earth. So you cannot really use gold for the whole world to transaction. The standard can be like compared to gold, but you cannot like practically, physically use gold everywhere. So now 
money concept came in and that was inevitable. Some of the kings in the past I have read for the history, let me tell you a brief on the history that some of the kings in the past tried to stop money from coming in and being into the mainstream. But it was inevitable. So many countries are taxes and they're kind of stopping crypto, they're trying to stop crypto, they're not trying to support it. But you know, the crypto and Web3 world is so useful and the technology is inevitable. So that is going to come in and we're going to have cryptos, we're going to have crypto payments, crypto systems. Privacy in Web3.0 world is really important and transparency between the companies, the governments, the banks is needed for the customer. We should be knowing where our money is going, where the transactions are happening. It should all be public and this also stops many illegal users. And coming over to the downside of this topic, there is a little downside that crypto will make like people addicted, like the future kids addicted to technology even more. So there is the dopamine rush problem. Basically, you get dopamine. Basically, you get dopamine from playing games, being into the VR world, or basically engaging in technology. That is like quick dopamine. In real life, you have to work to get dopamine. Hey, you get dopamine like in in a few minutes or in a matter of like few clicks. So that is a concern that how we're gonna stop this Web 3.0 world from getting addictive. Also, there are regulations coming in and many countries are adopting. Crypto has crashed right now as I'm making this video. But I am really sure that crypto is gonna come back, crypto will hit back and it will come into the mainstream this time. So in the bear market, basically what happens is when everything is even going right, adoptions are going on, apps are made, usages are built, countries are supporting it and Many of the companies are accepting payments as crypto now. So all that is happening in the background, but the main concept is, the main problem is that the bear market is, right now it's a bear market. So basically it's a recession going on in the US and UK, almost recession time, which, which makes the stock market go down, which makes the inflation go high, obviously because post COVID and US printed so much money that it had to happen sometime. So due to that, crypto is really affected. But in the background, the adoptions, the usages, the Ethereum, Ethereum like app developers and blockchain developers are increasing day by day. And Ethereum is basically a platform where you could like use and make apps based upon Ethereum blockchain, which is day by day increasing and crypto payments are increasing. So next time, like when the recession is over, next time when the bull run hits, Crypto is going to be a major, major mainstream platform to be on. And that was it for it. Uh, thanks for staying in guys. And this was kind of a digital transformation subject project too. I haven't been making content from so long. So I should, I should probably start uploading more consistently. And we will talk about crypto. I am invested into crypto. I usually check up on crypto and the usages. So yeah, we are going to be bringing more content of crypto. If, if you guys are fine with that. Thanks for watching the video guys. Make sure you like.